Hi, my name is Olga Maus from Pixel Train. I'm a senior 3D VFX and game dev trainer with more than 20 years of experience in teaching artists all over the world. This advertising free tutorial was made possible by my wonderful Patreons. If you like it, please subscribe and give me a thumbs up. And maybe you also want to become a Pixel Train patron yourself. With that, you support the making of these tutorials and get even more benefits like patron only tutorials, technical articles, industry news, Discord access, and discounts to my publications. Link in the description below. Thanks a lot, and now let's get started. Have fun. Welcome now to this lesson. And this lesson is something special because it's a lesson from the future. We are meanwhile in Blender 4.2 and the normals workflow and the shade smooth workflow has changed since the capturing of this publication. So I was thinking that now is a good point in time to explain a little bit more how it's done now and also use this extra lesson to give you a little bit more insight about that. So if you don't understand everything at this point in your learning process, with this publication, it's absolutely okay. You can come back later and look into the later section of this uh, lesson here to understand a little bit more what's going on. But what has changed now? You see, we are back now with our really simple model of this figure. I removed everything which we have done with the smooth shading because if you import an older file, your smooth version into a new Blender like 4.2, everything is converted so that it works. And I want to explain what has changed and how is it done. So it was really important for me that I uh, really cleaned up the whole thing. Let's dive now directly into the lesson. And for this, we take here this hat first. I go to the local view with a slash on my number pad, or if you don't have it, you can go here to view local view and use then this item here, toggle local view. And I also go out here from the material preview back here to the solid shading so that you can see now the facets. This was the starting point for the explanation of shade smooth. And the idea is that instead of adding more and more geometry to make an organic model, we want to interpolate surface normals. And this makes a soft appearance without adding more geometry. And it was done before like that. We, for example, click the right mouse button and we used here shade smooth to shade smooth the whole object. Or if we have some areas which we want to keep sharp, we used shade auto smooth. Let's first go here to shade smooth and try to understand what it's doing. And you see, it makes all the faces smooth by interpolating vertex normals. And vertex normals is a word which we use later a lot. And you see, if we do that, everything is soft and that was exactly the appearance we wanted to have. So same here in this Blender version. If we want to have it back with the facets, you go here to shade flat, right mouse button click on to the object and everything is as before. But then we had pieces. Let's go out with the slash here on the numpad like this here, the nose. And if I isolate this here now, this object is a little bit more complicated because we want to have a smooth shading here on the outside, but here we have an area which we want to keep sharp. And if we now go to shade smooth with the right mouse button click, you will see that we run into this ugly problem here. Everything is now smoothed out, even the edges which we don't want to do. So let's go out there, go back to shade flat and try to remember what we learned in the last lesson. In the last lesson, we talked about that we can use under the right mouse button click the auto smooth. And what this did was, you remember that here under the mesh data properties, we have a section with the name normals. And you will see now here in Blender 4.2 that this section is completely removed. Question, why was it removed? And does it make sense to remove it? The thing is that this section here, this normals, were calculated all the time on top of your mesh. That means one thing, it was a performance issue, yeah, because if you have a really complex mesh, it has to calculate the angles and things like that all the time to get the normals correct. The other thing was, if you export your model later into another application, for example, I use game engines like Godot or Unity a lot, you run into the problem that they don't have this process like this, they really need vertex normals correctly and you run into the problem that the object looked really different. 
and this was a problem. So it's better to have something which you have more control over that. That's the reason why they removed it. But they had two inclinations of removing that. First, they removed it completely, gave everything into the control of the artist, and then the artists came and said, yeah, but it was really convenient. In some cases, can you make it better? And that's the reason why we have now version Blender 4.2, where I think we have now a final workflow for that. So how is it done now? There are two different routes you can go. One route is mimicking the old workflow, so an automatic route. And then we have the manual route, which I would prefer if you go later out into, like I've said, the game engine or another application, which really needs the normals. Let's go first to the automatic thing. And to understand that better, we have to look into something which we haven't talked about in this publication yet, the modifiers here. Every object here can have a modifier. And you find these modifiers here under the wrench icon here. And you see here is a list of the modifiers on the object. We don't have any. And if you want to add them, you can click here or you also can press Shift A here to add a modifier. And here's now a new section with the name Normals. And here at the end, we have a Smooth by Angle modifier. And if you add that now, you will see that we have options which we know now from the old workflow. You see we have an angle and an ignore sharpness. And this mimics the old workflow. Question is now, why don't we see that? You see, nothing has changed here. The reason for this is we need to tell Blender that we want to use vertex normals in a really special way. And this is not done in flat shading here. And that's the reason. So if you go here and say, let's say um, auto smooth, you will see now it works like expected. And you can do now your changes here like you've done before. And modifiers run always after the mesh is generated in a stack from top down. And so that's the reason why it's now here. So it's mimicking the old workflow and you now can select this thing, change that here. Instead of adding it by hand, let's remove it with this little cross. There's a faster way of doing that. Let's go back here to shade flat to mimic that. Now in Blender 4.2, finally, you go here, shade auto smooth like you've done it before in the older versions. And you see now this modifier is added for you with a special tag here, we will see that in a moment. And we have here in the last operation window here, directly the angle which you can change. Big advantage now is if you click here, deselect it, go back here, you don't see the last operation, but you always can go here into the modifiers by clicking here on this wrench icon here. Then Blender is clever enough to jump into the modifiers of this object, or you can go here and you can change here now the angle as you like. So if I lower now the angle, you see, same behavior like before, you can do that here and so on. So that's really clever to do that like this. Question is now, what is this new tag here? This is a new feature on Blender 4.2 because this smooth by angle should run always at the end of the stack. So if you add other modifiers, you had to move this smooth by angle always to the bottom. And this was extremely annoying. Now, if you add a new modifier, let's say go here and let's make something silly add a wireframe modifier, you will see that the wireframe modifier is placed in front or before the smooth by angle because this little pin here is on. And this little pin, by the way, if you deactivate that by clicking here, you can get it back for other modifiers as well. You go to this little drop down inside of the modifiers and here is a pin to last. And this is something you can add here and now this is always pinned to last like before. And you can also use it for other modifiers as you see here. Nice thing. If you want to mimic now the old workflow, this would be the way. Let's recap that. It's shaded flat. You want to have it smooth like before, select it like before, right mouse button click, auto smooth, change it here. Or if you want to change it later, instead of going here into the mesh data properties, you go here to the modifiers, find the modifier with the name smooth by angle, the last one because it's pinned and here you can change it. That's it, everything is done. But now we have a little bit more we can do. And this is something I want to explain to you because if you want to use it for other replications, this maybe is a good thing. And let's remove that now here. 
and bring back everything again and yeah think about what we want to do let's say we have now this nose and we want to bring it later out we know that some edges needed to be sharp others not how to do that now in a way that in the export it is prevented for this we need to mark these vertices sharp we have to split normals and to do that we have to go first to the edit mode you can go to the edit mode here or I use my tab. I have here the pie menu activated for that. So I go here to the edit mode. I isolate it again and I go here to edges. Click away so that you see what's going on. Now you see I can select here my edges and you learn all about that selecting edges and edge loops and so in other lessons. But I first want to show you something here at the top. And this is also new. In the capturing of the publication, you have seen that I change here under the overlays menu here. This menu was extremely long at some point, And so the Blender guys also decided that this is not the best idea. So if you are in edit mode, you will see that there's a new drop down now here, edit mode. And these are now the options which you see inside of the edit mode for the edit mode overlays. So that's the only change here. There are some additions, yes, but um, it's the same like uh, adding them here. But here the list was too long. Now we have them here. And here you see that at the top here we have special markings. And these markings are helping you seeing on the wireframe what's going on. We come back to them in a minute. And here we can see the normals. And what we want to see are the vertex split normals. And this icon here, you see. We have three options for that. The middle icon here where we see on the vertex on the corner here is split. This is the one we want to see. You can change here the length if you can't see them enough. And now you see, okay, these are the normals which are sitting here on these vertices. And you see, they are interpolated. Yeah, they, they try to mimic the curvature from this really big polygon and this polygon here. And that's the reason why this object looks so strange here if you go to shade smooth because this is mimicking the whole thing but if we now want to change that we can now add sharp edges and this is something we can do before in older versions of blender and this was the way i was teaching people making game assets because this is the way a game engine or an external application also works split it normals you have to mark for this the areas which you want to have sharp. So I'm in edge mode. I alt click here on one of these edges to select now this edge loop here. And then you can go to the edge menu here. And here is an option mark sharp and some other options. You also find this menu under the keyboard shortcut control E. So control E is the edge menu. And you have here the same options. Or under the right mouse button. And the right mouse button here shows you this point also these options and we select here for the first time mark sharp and what now happens is you see that now the normals on these points are splitted for this polygon it looks up and for this polygon it looks like this and that's the reason why now this here looks sharp and this is named we have now split normals or custom normals here and this is something we don't need to calculate all the time. You see, we don't have a modifier here or something calculating all the time. This is something which is part of the data of this vertex. And this is exported. And you can do that now for every edge you want. So you can say, I want to have also this edge loop, right mouse button, click, mark, sharp, and it is, yeah, like this. And if you now go out here, you will see this mark sharp if you are in smooth mode. If you go back to shade flat and now say, I want to have this here smooth, it doesn't work. If you go to shade smooth, you now see, okay, it's back. Now you have it sharp. Why? Because there's an option, keep sharp edges. So that's correct like this. Don't confuse this now with shade auto smooth. If you click that here instead of shade smooth, you will have a double. Why? Because you have the tacked edges, which are sharp, and you also have this angle here going on. So if I lower that, you see, you still have the control, 
And that's the reason why we have here an ignore sharpness, because if you lower it now to zero, everything should be uh, sharp. If you go now up, 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 over 90 degree, everything should be soft, but it's still sharp. Why? Because we have tagged these edges here sharp. But you can click here, ignore sharpness, and then you see it's overwriting this data. Doesn't make too much sense, but I wanted to make this point clear for you that you understand what's going on. So if you want to do your own stuff, go here to Shade Smooth, and then we go back here. So if you tag now these edges sharp, you see they are colored here. And this color is something we can set here. You see, we have four different kinds of markings, which we can have on an edge. I remove all by holding down the left mouse button and drag over all of them. Now they are gone. And what you see here is this one here, sharpness. And now you see, that's the way you can analyze where have you set an edge sharp. If you want to remove the sharpness, what you can do is you select these. For example, now I select only these three edges with press down shift key, right mouse button, click clear sharp, and then they are not sharp anymore, which looks really strange. I confess here they are sharp, these not, but you see my point. Okay, let's remove all the sharps by going back into edit mode, go to the edges, select everything, A key, right mouse button, click clear, sharp and now everything is soft again ugly what if you have a really complex mesh and you don't want to go in and do every sharpness by hand is there a faster way of doing it or half automatic way yes there is so if you go in here go to edge mode select nothing here at the moment right mouse button click and we have here an option now set sharpness by angle and this was also possible in older versions. So first I have to select it by sharpness and then I set my mark sharp. This is now in this one item here, really convenient, set sharpness by angle. You click that, you can change now here what you want to do, how to do it, but you see it doesn't tag anything. Why? Because I haven't selected anything. So select it first, right mouse button click, set sharpness by angle. And now for everything what is selected, because otherwise you maybe destroy things in a part of the mesh which you don't want. So you have to select first what you want to process. So in my case, the whole mesh. And then you can play with that here and look for the thing you're after. I'm not after these edges here. You see 20 degree would be a bad idea. I bring it up now. I only have these and these. And that's it. I click here. Now the sharpness is done here. Okay, let's tidy up the whole thing. I go back here. And I activate greases, bevels, and seam markings because we later need them. So that nothing changes here. And we don't need to see the normals yet. Okay, we can deactivate that. But remember, the split normals are the thing which we normally want to have. Then we go out here. And I hope this lesson helped you now to understand a little bit better what's going on here inside of the mesh and how to make something automatically soft and sharp and also manually.